Could the Perseverance rover have just found evidence of past life on Mars? A brand new study in Nature reports the discovery of organic matter tied to some interesting redox reactions, which I'll explain later, in Jezero Crater on Mars, which could potentially be evidence of ancient life on the red planet. And I'm particularly excited about this new paper because my entire PhD research was done on essentially redox sensitive minerals, those that form or dissolve depending on redox conditions, which I'll define later, and there's hardly ever any newsworthy things going on in my research field. So I'm really excited about this and let's just dive right into it. Just to give a brief background, Jezero Crater is a 45 kilometer wide impact crater on Mars formed billions of years ago. Around 3.8 to 3.5 billion years ago, it's thought that Mars had liquid water on its surface and that water flowed into Jezero. We think this because of the rocks present there. Some of the interbedded muds and sands suggest a delta-like deposition. Eventually, however, Mars lost its atmosphere, climate shifted to colder, drier conditions, and the water evaporated. But the good news is the rocks hold the story of not only the ancient water on Mars, but also potentially what the water might have had in it. Say, life, maybe? And this is what makes this crater a key area of interest when it comes to exploring Mars. Okay, so back to this new paper and what they found. The Bright Angel Formation, which at first I was confused about because we also have a Bright Angel Formation here on Earth. You can see a lot of it in the Grand Canyon, so I was like, wait where was the study done? But it turns out there's also a formation named Bright Angel on Mars. And in this rock formation, Perseverance drilled and imaged mudstones and conglomerates, those potential deltaic deposits. And they found that several of the mudstone targets contain organic molecules. Now, this is not the first time organic molecules have been found on Mars, but these organic molecules seem to be associated with iron phosphate and iron sulfide minerals, likely Vivianite and Gregite. The iron phosphate or Vivianite phases are present as nodules or tiny dark rounded features, and the iron sulfide or Gregite was found as reaction fronts or small circular spots with dark rims and lighter cores that may represent chemical reaction boundaries. Okay, so what does this mean in terms of life? Well, on Earth, these minerals tend to form as a result of microbial activity. Vivianite as a result of microbial iron reduction and gregite as a result of microbial sulfate reduction. And as somebody who cultured sulfate reducing microbes in a lab for five plus years, I can confirm that gregite is one of those products. In fact, these exact minerals have been used as biosignatures in Earth's ancient rock record, helping us to reconstruct ancient life on our own planet. The reason these reactions are so useful to microbes and well, all life is because the transfer of electrons produces energy. Recall from your Bio 101 class that powerhouse of the cell we're always hearing about, the mitochondria, the reason it's the powerhouse is because it transfers electrons in what we call the electron transport chain. Now, all life does this to some degree. Not all life have mitochondria, but all life does this transfer of electrons to gain energy, to metabolize, and to live. But, but, but... The redox reactions that form gregite and vivianite could technically occur abiotically in the absence of life. So how can we tell whether these minerals on Mars were produced by life or not? Well, the organic matter present may help us determine this. For example, if the organics are simple random mixtures like what you might expect from geochemical synthesis or impact delivery, this might point to an abiotic origin. Whereas if the organics are more complex, showing patterns associated with metabolism, like lipids, certain polymers, chirality, or kind of handedness. This could point to biogenic origins, but one of the biggest tests will be measuring the isotopes in these minerals. As I've talked about in many of my past videos, elements like carbon, for example, can have multiple stable isotopes, which are just the same element, but different number of neutrons. So for example, carbon has stable isotopes, carbon 13 and carbon 12. Carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons, while carbon-13 has six protons and seven neutrons, hence 12 and 13. But because that extra neutron in carbon-13 makes it a tiny bit heavier, we call carbon-13 the heavy isotope and carbon-12 the light isotope. This is important because life tends to prefer the light isotope. 
What does this mean? It means that if we can measure the carbon isotope signature in this organic material, it might show us a light isotopic signature, which might be indicative of a biogenic origin. But thankfully there are so many isotopic systems we can measure like iron, sulfur. Sulfur has stable isotopes sulfur 32 and 34, light and heavy, and life that utilizes sulfur in its metabolism like sulfate reducing microbes that might produce gregite tend to prefer the lighter isotopes. So we can also measure the isotopic signatures in these minerals to see if their isotopes are preferentially light. And in addition to isotopes, trace element signatures might also be telling. Some microbes cause enrichments in trace elements like zinc, nickel, copper, iron, etc in their byproducts. And in fact, these researchers already recorded some zinc and nickel enrichments in the gregite. Unfortunately though, Perseverance does not have the tools or kind of detection limit to really get us those isotopic measurements that will be good. So we really, really hope for sample return. We've, we've cached a sample now and we want it to return to Earth so we can use our more precise analytic tools to measure it and to measure those isotopes and those trace elements and really get a better idea of whether this might have been produced by life or not. So while this paper is super cool, I cannot stress enough that we did not find modern life on Mars. We did not find ancient life on Mars. We found potential evidence of potential ancient life on Mars, which I know doesn't sound as cool. And I probably used something way more clickbaity in my title for this video, but it is still really significant. And I'm crossing my fingers that the sample gets returned safely and we can do our deeper analyses on it. Now, I do also wanna stress that even if we find that it was abiotically produced without life, this is still significant because it still teaches us about Mars's habitability and redox chemistry. And this can help us when searching for life on other worlds, but I have my fingers crossed that the other hypothesis is supported. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick breakdown of this brand new paper that I'm super excited about, and I will see you guys in the next one.